Thank you for the invitation to present at this mini symposium on AI and surgery. My name is Tony Jark and I'm Director of Data and Analytics at Intuitive. I'm excited to speak with you all about enabling objective assessment of surgical skills using surgical data science and AI. Now, before we dive into the exciting progress in objective assessment, it's important we align to why we are working on these technologies. My team and I discuss this point frequently, and it is helpful so that we can select the right tools to solve a specific problem. So what problem are we as a community trying to solve? We know from clinical literature that complication rates and readmission rates remain a challenge for us as an industry. They drive up costs, not to mention their impact on patients. So the overarching question is, how can we make surgery better? Is there an optimal way to perform surgery to get the best outcomes? And if there is, how can we teach it and make it scalable to enable the mastery of surgery? Now, making surgery better is a challenging problem that involves many factors. One way to develop these solutions is through technical, clinical, and operational mastery. Technical mastery, how do I use robotics, imaging, computing, analytics to get better as a surgeon? Clinical mastery, how do we design a system that enables the right clinical outcomes? And operational mastery, how do we work across ORs and hospitals to perfect workflows and achieve the right economics? All of this with the goal to advance the quadruple aim, improve outcomes, patient experience, care team experience, and total cost to treat per disease episode. It's clear that analytics and objective assessment are just one part of the overall solution. It truly takes a multidisciplinary approach. It's also apparent that these many factors for advancing care are not just about technology. Technology plays an important enabling role but healthcare is fundamentally about people. It's about solving a specific problem for a specific person. And when technology is involved, it requires an understanding of the person using it, what it's being used for, and the environment in which it could be used. Why do we emphasize this viewpoint? Consider this, about 70 people are involved in the day of surgery. You can imagine that gives a lot of opportunity for variability. We've seen something around 2,400 variations in instrument choreography for just one procedure not to mention the variation in surgeon and care team skill. Given so much variability across the continuum of care, it's critical we see, seek a deep characterization of people so that we can develop technologies that deliver a meaningful impact. A lot of research and discussion has been put into quantifying surgery. Most methods require a peer review or an expert review, or if you are a believer in the crowd, then you can use lay people without clinical training, but then you need a lot of them. These traditional scoring systems have some degree of subjectivity. So the question becomes, how can we help to provide more objectivity, which allows us to reduce variability as well as the potential to scale to impact many trainees? I'd like to start by reviewing some promising academic research that uses machine learning and AI for objective assessment of surgical skills. Dr. Andrew Hung from the University of Southern California was among the first to use robotic system data to help distinguish between the actions of a senior and a less experienced surgeon in actual surgery. The different colors indicate the trajectories of the instrument in the surgeon's dominant hand, the instrument in the other hand, and the camera. The top row shows the data from experienced da Vinci surgeons for four different steps of a prostatectomy. The bottom row shows the data from novice da Vinci surgeons. It is apparent there is a clear difference between experts and novices. And these differences between experts and novices were present across a number of different metrics. This table illustrates different metrics on the rows and different task comparisons on the columns. Red indicates significant difference in a particular metric for a particular task. It is evident we are able to identify many advanced subjective metrics across surgery that could be useful. But we've only shown expert novice comparisons. The bigger question is, can this data be used to help predict outcomes? Preliminary results suggest it might be possible. Here we show on the left the top 10 features used in a model to predict continence recovery following prostatectomy. The model included both objective metrics from robot system data, as well as clinical pathological features. When we look at the top features used in this prediction, we can identify several key steps, as well as metrics such as third arm retraction and endorismic articulation. Interestingly, the model relied more on objective metrics than clinical pathological features. Although exciting, much more work is needed by additional research teams to validate these results, as well as to help us identify additional metrics 
since we're just scratching the surface of our understanding here. I've just shown you some exciting work illustrating the value of objective metrics. These metrics are crucial to our enhancing learning. Let's dive into how they're defined. By placing a computer between the patient and surgeon, you can capture meaningful information about the procedure. Smart systems can capture information such as, such as kinematic data, system events, and endoscopic video. If algorithms can be developed to recognize patterns from this information, we can bring more consistency and precision to what are currently only qualitative measures. With large quantitative data sets and advanced analytics, we may be able to identify performance features that are consistent with an expert's qualitative evaluation, yet remove the subjectivity. But how do we know which metrics matter most when it comes to determining how well surgery is performed? Does operative time provide objective performance indicators? Can it translate to a determinant of surgical skill? Or are there other factors at work? What about the number of cases performed? If you've performed a certain number of cases, does it mean you'll have a better outcome? Or can we dive much deeper and look at task-based objective performance indicators for critical steps of surgery, like we showed for prostatectomy? Surgical data science has shown promising results to help extract and identify these metrics from surgery. However, even though a metric might be able to differentiate expertise or correlate to outcomes, it doesn't mean a surgeon or trainee can understand it. Therefore, objective feedback needs to be interpretable to be most useful. One approach used by our team at Intuitive combines expert domain knowledge with sophisticated data-driven methods to build interpretable models to classify skill. These models can then be used to provide feedback to surgeons through a variety of means. How might we do this? We develop methods that organize clinical-like tasks, rows in this table, with a set of underlying skills that need to be mastered. Here are the columns. These can be mapped by an expert with deep clinical and educational knowledge. For example, the uter uterine horn task requires the skills camera use, energy use, one-hand dissection, and two-hand arm, two arm retraction. Or camera use is required by all tasks. With this mapping, Algorithms can be developed to choose optimal combinations of objective performance indicators for each task skill pair to objectively assess skill. Now to deliver real value, these methods require rigorous feature selection and validation. We show here an example, two-hand suture, where we use data-driven methods to select the optimal number of features for two areas of technical skill, suturing and camera use. And we validate our methods in their ability to estimate expertise across all task skill pairs, which is critical so we ensure that we are in fact delivering meaningful information to a trainee. Most of the work I have shown so far examines objective performance indicators at the task level, a context deliberately chosen to deliver most meaningful value. So why do we choose this context? Whole procedure metrics leave a gap in actionable insights. We are unable to illustrate the skilled nuance that goes into performing surgery. If we have labeled procedural steps, we can start to isolate critical phases or workflows within surgery that can be more actionable. Many research teams, including ours, have worked on this problem by developing algorithms to automatically recognize tasks or activities within surgery. The methods can vary, but have been accelerated by deep learning techniques. It's critical that we continue to work on these algorithms so that we can use the optimal context for objective assessment or to deliver the right tools at the right time. But this isn't an easy problem. Remember how we mentioned before the variability in surgery, from surgeons to care teams to instrumentation? If we look across surgeries, we see differences in overall duration, sequencing of steps, and duration of steps, as illustrated here for sleeve gastrectomy, where each step is a different color and each row is a different procedure. We must demonstrate that our models can accommodate this type of variability to ensure we deliver the right insights. But objective metrics alone are insufficient to delivering real impact. We need to enable personalized learning through a comprehensive training ecosystem where objective metrics are a critical component running across all technologies. I would like to walk through a few technologies at Intuitive that enable personalized learning. Many of these tools are informed or built using objective metrics, machine learning, and surgical AI. Let's look at each one. First, intuitive learning is an on-demand platform 
that gives the surgeon, fellow, resident, or care team member their training pathway right at their fingertips. It includes many learning plan features, such as searchable video catalogs, and a growing library of interactive clinical videos developed by surgeons. And what's particularly exciting about this platform is its ability to tailor training pathways by observing or quantifying how others have learned most effectively. A second example is virtual reality simulation. Here we show SimNow Intuitive's cloud-enabled simulation platform. Virtual reality seems to be an engaging platform for learning and honing surgical skills outside the OR, from gamified to clinically representative exercises. Continuing to research how VR practice can be used to improve intraoperative skills is vital. These best practices, identified using objective metrics or machine learning, could then be validated and shared across institutions to improve learning. Furthermore, best practices could be integrated into simulation. This would allow us to teach and scale optimal skills in surgery. For example, how should one optimally hold a needle to suture with greatest skill and efficiency? Again, I'd like to highlight some of Dr. Hung's work that identified common needle gestures during the anastomosis and a prostatectomy. These motions that did not match the common gestures were associated with lower efficiency, more attempts, and more trauma. The ne these needle gestures could be embedded into simulation, such as the exercise we see here, to train the right skills. Finally, I believe there's an exciting opportunity to empower surgeons with tools and technologies focused on post-operative review. By using the optimal information, robotic system data and video, extracting the optimal context such as task-based videos and objective performance indicators, it's possible to create a learning tool to identify opportunities for improvement following surgery. But as we said, identifying areas of improvement is just the first step. By connecting deeply these tools with other aspects of the training ecosystem, such as intuitive learning and VR simulation, we might be able to provide surgeons with the recommended tools they need to continuously improve with greatest efficiency and ease. Importantly, the methods to objectively measure surgical skill depend on and are influenced by smart systems and instruments. Being able to distinguish good tissue from bad tissue or identify key structures is something critical to surgery. Fluorescence imaging using ICG is a powerful tool that can help you visualize a variety of things. And we continue to work to expand the types of structures that can be visualized with fluorescence imaging in an effort to help reduce complications. These imaging technologies can significantly change the behavior of a surgeon on a particular step, thereby impacting how well a surgery is performed and the associated objective metrics. Similarly, Intraoperative guidance technologies that use augmented reality can improve surgery. On the left, you see IRIS, our 3D segmented imaging technology being used for a partial nephrectomy, and on the right, ION, our flexible robotic catheter platform is navigating to a lung module. In both examples, a CT scan segmented using surgical AI can be integrated into a virtual environment to help a surgeon or pulmonologist see and plan. It is clear these technologies will impact how surgery is performed, as well as how well surgery is performed. We just reviewed a few of the many exciting directions of objective assessment in surgery and how underlying technologies can support or influence them. But as I said initially, these are difficult problems that require meticulous attention to detail and strong collaborations across the community to make a clinically meaningful impact. And I believe that open data sets, such as those that are part of the Endoscopic Vision Challenge, open robotic platforms like the Da Vinci Research Kit that uses hardware from decommissioned systems, and grants across training and education, clinical research, and technology will be imperative to this process, progress. We at Intuitive have worked hard to support these initiatives and to foster innovation in this space. Now, I know I covered a lot today, and it's clear that quantifying surgery through surgical data science and AI is an exciting and emerging field. However, a lot of work remains as we navigate this new frontier. Surgery is a high stakes environment involving some of the most complex decision-making, sensory motor skills, and care team coordination. We must continue our collaborative approach to building out the tools, technologies, and ecosystem needed to facilitate these capabilities through machine learning and surgical data science. But let's be clear, challenges remain. As a community, we have to come together to responsibly introduce objective assessment technologies that actually deliver an impact. What will that take? We need to focus on and validate clinically meaningful technologies. We need to align 
on common vocabularies to describe surgery so that the people who use them, surgeons and care teams, can easily understand them. And we must proactively develop methods to address bias in surgical, science, surgical data science and AI, given the diverse characteristics of patients, surgeons, and care teams around the world. It is important we learn from the far too many examples of how bias can find its way into the world by taking action while we're still in these early and exciting stages. I'd like to leave by re-emphasizing one final thought. Disruptive innovation can only become sustaining when it solves a problem for people, then it adds value. And technology can't do it alone, especially objective metrics of a surgeon's behavior. It also requires a deep understanding of people. Technology and the human element leads to disruptive progress. Thank you very much.